I want to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. More on them in a little bit. Sometimes Mondays can be a little hectic with extra work to be done from being off schedule all weekend. And this Monday is no exception. I'm already thinking about lunch this morning because we have some activities to do this morning. And when we get home, it will be lunchtime. And as you guys know, you guys have watched me cook lots of meals on my channel. And I always talk about it that every meal pretty much starts off with some onions and garlic. And so today I'm actually making one of my kids' favorite meals. And that is a chili with cornbread. They all love chili. And it's one of those meals that's super easy to make. And sometimes I make it with like a chili mac and do it with noodles. But if I don't do that, then I will make cornbread to go with it. So I have my cornbread recipe linked down below, but it's a very simple recipe of just two cups of flour, two cups of cornmeal, a third of a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of baking powder, and then I add in a couple of eggs, a couple cups of milk, and a half a cup of melted butter. Now, the best thing about this that's very easy cleanup because I do it all in one dish and I melt my butter straight in my cast iron skillet which is what I'm going to be baking it in so that's a great way to get my cast iron preheated and oiled and also the butter melted. I actually really enjoy Mondays. Don't get me wrong, I love the break that the weekend gives us. A lot of times on the weekend, I don't do a lot of cooking. I mean, if we're home, I am, but if we're out and about, we might pick up something. Um, typically on Sundays, we're out of the house all day and we're at my parents' house, and so she does a lot of the cooking on that day, my mom, which is a very nice break for me. And so on Mondays, it's nice just to get back into our routine. As a homemaker, I need a lot of time at home in order to keep all the plates spinning, you know, the sourdough fermenting, the laundry going, dishes done, cleaning just all the things and when I'm out of the house a lot of those things get pushed to the side and so on Mondays even though they can be a little bit busier because I have to catch up on some of those very simple tasks it is kind of nice to get back into the routine of things and get the house put back together and just get back on our normal schedule of nap times because on the weekends and roundabout we typically aren't doing normal nap time so babies are a little bit more cranky and it's just a good reset day to get us ready for the week. I love to try to keep beans and tomatoes and tomato sauce on hand. Now, ideally, these would be canned 
from our own garden. And a lot of times when I make chili, I'll use dry beans, but on a day like today, when things are a little more hectic and I have somewhere to be, it's nice just to have the canned goods in the pantry. So anytime or shopping, I try to keep a good stock of those. So it's easy to make a homemade meal even whenever you know you have to cheat a little bit and use a canned good. Now you saw that I added in um, a bag of something that was bone broth. I had a little bit extra bone broth left over from a meal that I made um, you know, over the weekend. I don't always add broth into my chili, but in this case, I just didn't want anything to go to waste. Today is also the day where we go and pick up milk from the farm that we get our milk from. And so when we head out for our morning activities, I'm going to be meeting up with my local milk farmer to get our milk. And so that means I need to get all of our jars ready because basically she'll bring me new jars of fresh milk and then I give her back the old jars clean and we kind of keep swapping them out. And so I'm packing the cooler. I like to put a lot of bags in between the jars because if they clink together, they will break. I've had it happen before and so I like to be very careful and just add a bunch of them in there. I just kind of leave them in the cooler and pack them in each time or a milk crate or whatever I'm using to transport the milk. So this clip is actually when we are back home. I got the food already and then just left the chili simmering on the stove until we got back. My husband works from home so he's here so I feel okay leaving it on while we're gone. And so now we are going to eat lunch and then I'm going to work on putting away all the milk and we also got a bunch of farm fresh eggs. It's always a puzzle to get all of the milk back in the refrigerator and I like to check the dates on the top and put the ones that was milked first in the front and so we can use that up first. And then like I said, we got some eggs and these ones are pretty dirty but they're not washed yet and so I'm gonna put them in my basket and just leave them out on the counter until we get through all the eggs in my refrigerator. And then I do wash them before we use them just because, you know, only if they're really dirty. So if they're like covered in chicken poop and dirt and grass and hay and all that, I will wash them mainly because I have a lot of helpers in my kitchen and I don't want to get those shelves inside of our food. I am so excited to tell you guys about today's video sponsor, KiwiCo. My kids are obsessed with KiwiCo and they get so excited when the box comes in the mail. In fact, they all will like fight over who gets to be the one to open it up because they want to dig right in and see what crates they got this time and what projects are in their crates. KiwiCo provides a monthly crate delivery to your door with fun hands-on projects that are designed by experts and tested by kids. KiwiCo is perfect for hands-on fun that's also educational. With nine different lines, there is something for every age and interest. As a mother of six kids ranging from 11 to one, these are tried and true and something that my kids absolutely love and enjoy doing. And I love it because it gives them hours of entertainment, not just while they are building and creating, but afterwards when they are playing with their creations. This month, my younger two children received the Panda Crates. The Panda Crate is designed to nurture naturally curious and creative babies. My two middles received the Kiwi Crate, which is designed for young inventors with all the materials and inspiration needed for fun, hands-on projects that explore art, 
science, and engineering. My oldest two received the Tinker Crates, which are definitely favorites around here. The Tinker Crate develops kids' natural creativity and curiosity using science, technology, engineering, and math. Several of the crates come with multiple projects and they come with everything you need inside of the crate with easy to follow directions with pictures so they are able to do almost everything by themselves. The best part is that the prices are super affordable. Most KiwiCo subscriptions are about $20 a month. If you are ready to try KiwiCo for your family, you can use the link down in my description box below or use my code Our Oily House to get 50% off your first month. This afternoon, I'm actually going to be getting a meal ready for tomorrow. We have been enjoying going on family bike rides. We've done so many already and I told my husband I want to try to continue doing these all through the springtime for two reasons. One, the weather's just so beautiful here this time of year and so before it gets like super hot and then obviously we are gonna be having a baby right at the beginning of summer. And so our older four kids can ride a bike with no training wheels and then the younger two can ride in the bike trailer behind my husband's bike and it has just been so fun. They all, six of them, love riding bikes and we have so many great places to ride bikes around our house and so I am actually making a whole chicken. I'm gonna be making some chicken salad with and then I'm also going to be getting a loaf of bread going and then tomorrow when we go on our bike ride in the afternoon I'm going to pack some food because it seems like the kids always do best if we have like at a halfway point have something to look forward to so either we ride to like a park or something and there's a little break or we have a snack or a meal together and then we do the other half of the ride. And so um, on this particular day tomorrow we're going to be having chicken salad sandwiches and so because the bread will need to ferment overnight I'm going to get that started this afternoon. It's sourdough bread so I'm going to let it ferment overnight and then I'll finish making it in the morning and I figured while I was getting that going I might as well make my chicken salad. I always find that chicken salad is better the next day anyway. So I thought I could make it today and then have it in the refrigerator and then I'll be all ready to go tomorrow. I've been milling all of my own grains lately, my whole wheat berries, and I have a lot of people asking what berries I use. These are the hard white berries, and then I just mill them. And so the only difference I've noticed, I'm still following the same sourdough, like no knead bread recipe that I make in my Dutch oven, but I do add just a little bit more liquid to the dough before I stretch and fold it because I find that the whole grains is a lot more dense. And of course that makes a little bit of a denser loaf. It's still super delicious and I love the health benefits of using whole grains. I'm whipping up some mayonnaise really quick that's going to go with my chicken salad. I have my mayonnaise recipe and my chicken salad recipe on my blog, so I'll link that below, but making your own mayonnaise is actually very simple. It's just one cup of avocado oil, one egg, two teaspoons of vinegar, or you can use lemon juice. You see on this particular day, I used lemon juice a half a teaspoon of salt and then I always just add in like a squirt of mustard and then I always make it in a wide mouth mason jar so that I can fit my immersion blender straight in there 
and I use my immersion blender until it's all like mixed up and looks like mayonnaise. It's really, really easy to make and it's super delicious and it's healthy because it's made with avocado oil rather than soybean oil, which is what typical mayonnaise is made with when you buy it from the store. Next up, I'm going to be chopping up all of the add-ins that I'm putting in my chicken salad. So my family loves when I put in green onions, celery, walnuts, pecans, some type of nut, like a soft nut, and grapes. And so I'm just going to be chopping all that up and you can see in my Instapot, it only has a few more minutes until my chicken's done. And then I will take the chicken out of the Instapot and let it cool slightly before I shred it and then basically just mix all of this up. So the fun thing about chicken salad is there's so many ways to do it. You can add in onions and celery and no grapes. I know grapes is kind of one of those things like some people like them, some don't. In fact, my husband doesn't love the grapes in the chicken salad, but all of the rest of us do. So I don't know if he eats them or picks them out or what he does, but I add them in because everybody else loves the grapes in there. Chicken salad is definitely one of our favorite meals in the summertime. When it starts getting really, really warm, I do try to use my oven, you know, I still use it, but less if I can just to keep the house not as hot. And so I love to rely on my Instapot. I am making a stretch and fold, like no need bread. And so every 30 minutes, I'm just walking over and stretching and folding this bread and just kind of reshaping it and putting it back in my bowl. And so I like to do this when I'm doing something else in the kitchen. So I am right there and I don't forget about it. I will stretch and fold it three times and then I will let it ferment a little bit on the counter. And then tonight before I go to bed, I'll actually put it in the refrigerator and let it ferment a little slower, but still continue to ferment in the refrigerator overnight. Anytime I make a full chicken or any chicken really my Instapot, I always save all of the um, juice that's in the Instapot for chicken broth. And so, I'm removing my insert and letting that cool down slightly while I clean my Instapot and put that away. And then I will pour all of the juice into a mason jar and that'll just be some really good chicken stock that I can use in a recipe sometime this week. So I'll save all of my bones off of my whole chicken here. So after I get all this meat shredded up and I mean majority of it, as much as I can pulled off, I will put the chicken, like the whole chicken and the carcass, the skin, and then whatever else is on it in a bag. And I freeze it unless I you know, need it right now. I just kind of keep frozen bones in the refrigerator to make broth with. And then after you make broth, you'll find more meat coming off of it. So I'll use this later on to make a chicken soup or maybe even use the chicken in some type of other recipe and then have the broth for a soup or stew or whatever I'm making.
you guys can see that I don't really measure completely when I'm making a chicken salad. That's one of the cool things about it. You really can't mess it up if you like, you know, more or less in it. You can just add. Um, we like ours pretty, what's the word? Like a lot of mayonnaise. We like it really saucy. And so I do add in quite a bit of mayonnaise, maybe more than some people, but that's the way my family likes it. But good things about it, you can always just add more or less depending on how it looks and how you prefer it. All right, the next thing that I have going on today is I'm actually making a recipe for my blog, Our Oily House. And so I am working on a melt and pour colored layered soap. And so a lot of times when I make soap, I make cold process soap bars. That's actually my personal favorite soap to make is a cold process soap bar, um, it's just easier to customize you get to pick all of your own fats and oils and everything in it but if you are a person that wants to make soap and is intimidated by lye which i know is a very common thing because i have lots and lots of soap recipes here on my youtube channel and also on my blog and that is my most common thing is people talking about how they are you know intimidated by lye which i understand because i was at first as well i always suggest making a melt and pour soap so you don't have to do the lye the lye part's already done for you so this base here has already been made into you know soap so this soap base has already gone through the process of the fats and oils being mixed with the water and lye and so now you don't have to do it and there's still lots of ways to customize it's still really fun my daughter loves making melt and pour soap and so we always have it on hand for her because I feel like she is definitely still a little young to be working with Y and so most of the time when I'm making this she is involved but anyway I am just like I said recipe testing and getting this going and I will have this recipe on my blog if you are interested but it's a very simple soap bar and like I said the main thing that I'm doing here is I'm going to make it a layered soap bar and so anyway that is what I am working on now. As you can see, even though I'm making a melt and pour soap bar, you can still customize it and make it really fun. So I got to make up my own scent by adding in essential oils. Now I picked three different colors to make this layered bar. And so I went with some green, blue, and purple, and then I'm mixing them up and then I'm pouring them into my mold and you'll see after these harden and I cut them how beautiful these turned out. Now the fun thing too about melt and pour is they don't have to go through the long curing process because that part has also already happened and so it makes it more fun if you are one of those people that doesn't like to wait the like four or five weeks to let your soap bars cure. They will be ready to go instantly. So this is just a few hours later. It does not take very long for um, a melt and pour bar to harden. And so I'm just going to cut this and show you guys the way it turned out. So this is the next morning and I'm going to show you guys one of our favorite breakfasts that we have been making 
it's been a couple weeks straight and that is Dutch baby pancakes. The reason why we've been making these so often is that they take a lot of eggs and a lot of milk and those are two things that we have in great abundance right now. So I'm actually following the recipe that's on our cast iron skillet cooking blog and I always have to times it by four and then it's the perfect amount for our family. So I'm mixing together four cups of flour, four cups of milk, a dozen eggs, four tablespoons of sugar, four teaspoons of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of salt. And then after I get everything all mixed together, I put it into my cast iron skillets, which you saw I put those in the oven, and I put four tablespoons of butter in each cast iron skillet, and then just kind of swirl the butter around and pour the batter into it and bake it and it is so good and it's so easy i told my kids I'm like i'm probably never gonna make regular pancakes again which isn't true i know i will but it's just so much easier than standing there and like flipping all of the pancakes i can make a huge batch of this and throw it in the oven and then in 20 minutes it's done now on this clip, you're only seeing me make one pan. I actually made two of these and now I know every morning just to make two. But on this particular day, I thought for some reason that one would be enough. And then I pretty quickly got a second one in the oven. And then since then we have made this, I don't know how many times. And I always just go straight to quadrupling the recipe. I'm also making a blueberry syrup to go with this. My kids love when I make a fruit syrup. So either blueberries or strawberries or mixed berries. And it's really easy. Basically just add some berries to a saucepan and then just a couple of tablespoons of sugar and kind of let it all melt a little bit. Not really melt, like let the sugar liquidate into the blueberries and then I blend it in my blender and it is so, so yummy. I use frozen fruit, fresh fruit, any fruit, and they all prefer this with pancakes. I'll press this one. because they are made with lots of butter in the pan. I don't even add butter to the top, so it's very easy to serve because I don't have to even worry about butter. I just put some of that homemade syrup on top and some fresh fruit and they are ready to go. Now, of course, we always serve all of our breakfast with our fresh, raw milk. After breakfast, I'm finishing up my loaf of bread, and so I'm just going to score this and get it in the oven. After my bread was finished baking, I sliced it up and let it cool slightly before putting it into a bag. And then I also transferred my chicken salad to a dish with a closed lid just so I could easily pack this stuff for the bike ride. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and 
you know, seeing some glimpse of a busy beginning of the week. Like I said, it's just one of those things that you can either love or hate. And in my personal opinion, it's just one of those things that I have decided to love and have some joy in getting back onto our normal routine. If you're new here, please that subscribe button. I get out a new video every single week.